Hi, everyone. I'm Gold Derby News and Features Editor Ray Richmond, and I'm here today with Louis Hoffman, who portrays the German teenager Werner Fennig in the four-part Netflix net limited series, All the Light We Cannot See, that's adapted from the 2014 Pulitzer Prize winning novel. Louis, um, welcome. And what attracted you to want to play a character like Werner? Um, first of all, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Um, what attracted me to the role? I mean, first thing that comes to my mind is is such a beautiful source material. I the the thing is, I didn't, I hadn't read the book before I got the part, um, but of, I of course did my research when I auditioned, and then after I got the part, I instantly started reading, and it's such a beautifully written, such a detail detailed um, written book that I uh, instantly fell in love with Van. I think what I love most about him is his constant fight, his constant fight for the good and his con con like his moral compass that he tries to follow. And then what makes it even more interesting is that he sort of tries to follow that path of his moral compass, compass but then sort of needs to leave the road and needs to, needs to take morally sort of, so to say, wrong decisions. And also with his with his gift of knowing how to deal with radios, how to build radios, um, sort of his gift of being a genius, um, that when the Nazis are trying to take advantage of is also becoming his burden. And I like that sort of um, when when something that you're really good at is being taken against you and you are being take, uh, um, taken advantage of, I think that is a really nice uh, struggle within yourself that I um, just instantly wanted to play. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, I always think, Lewis, that it's easier playing an evil character than one driven by goodness. So yeah. I applaud you for, you know, for giving so much humanity and emotional depth to Werner. You found a, a way to make him interesting rather than dull, which is not always easy with a character who's driven by decency. I appreciate it. Thank you. It was also difficult to, because it's such a, I guess, reacting character, such a passive character. And um, so that was a challenge to sort of not make, make him seem dull because he's always just reacting to something. Um, but that was actually one of my favorite scenes where he um, comes out of that position and becomes more active in that scene with Schmitz in the first episode where he's able to tell that. Uh, tell his story and um, that was actually one of my favorites because it was slightly out of character exactly no I was thinking that exact same thing mm -hmm. <clears throat> could you have imagined uh, growing up in Germany that you would be cast to portray a sympathetic Nazi um, I've mean I'm, I've I've portrayed quite a few Nazi characters, which doesn't mean they're all the same, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's it's very important to remind ourselves of what has happened and to keep making these films um, to avoid um, that it happens again. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm glad you sympathise with that human, um, whatever his uniform uh, was that he had to put on. What were what were you taught in school um, about the Nazi regime and what you know and what the country has done to make amends and restore its reputation in the world since World War II? Was that was that a big part of your studies in school uh, in your history classes? Or yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we be, we're being taught a lot in school in Germany from a very early young age on. Um, definitely, I would think that that would just be incredibly interesting, you know, mm. because. The country has done so much to, to you know, to make amends and restore its reputation after such a such a horrible time in the country. Uh, although pretty much everybody I imagine that had anything to do with it is gone by now. Uh, I think there's one person. I think one person left, or in the past few years, the last person who was in one of the uh, cut sets died. So it's yeah, um, pretty much all of uh, everyone is gone now. What's Let's talk uh, about the show's prop master, uh, Martin Z Zelle. Yeah. How do you pronounce it? Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Lewis, and, and how he taught you to build a, a 1940s style radio in under yeah. a minute. How much dedication to the task did that require? My God. A lot of dedication. No, not too much, actually. So when I talked to Sean um, when prepping for Werner, um, he was 
he he was the first thing he said to me was i want you to be able to operate a radio properly and i completely get it and i love actually i love when i can do prep anything physical uh, but i mean doesn't you know doesn't mean it has to be working out but anything physical that the character does physically and so i, I went to budapest a bit early and then just basically spent a week with Martin, um, the prop master, <laughs> working on radios, um, figuring them out, understanding them, building them. And at the end of the week, I think after like three or four hours a day um, in that week, I was able to build one in like under a minute, I think. Um, it, it, the, the thing is, the thing is, it's, it's not too hard and it would have worked. I mean, it didn't work, but it would have worked <laughs> if if it was 1940, because nowadays there's too much traffic in the air. It doesn't really uh, work as easy as it did back in the days, but it would have worked, I promise you. And di didn't you work, dedicate like five or six hours a day to that while while he was training you? I mean, that, that basically took up all your time. If you yeah, that but, yeah, but I mean, what I like about physical prep is that it's sort of subconscious um, because I, I mean, I do intellectual prep and like, you, know, you re try to read all the books and uh, try to prep as much, much as possible, but with something physical, it's so, so it's, it happens like effortlessly. And I like that, that you just do something physical and somehow tap into the character that way. Yeah. I would imagine that, yeah, it's probably sometimes easier even than emotional preparation. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was it like working with your showrunner and director, Sean, Sean Levy? He, uh, uh, he's quite a force of nature, having met him a yeah. few times, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and very talented, smart guy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the great thing about Sean is every second matters, like every second counts when you talk to him. Every second, every minute is filled with as much information as possible. And I really appreciated that, that you sort of get as much attention um, as you would need um, working with a director. And he's such a champion, like he champions his actors and he he wants the actors to try things out and to fail and to, to stand up again and try again. And I really like that about the process working with him. You are... Uh... I saw you quoted somewhere too, uh, Lewis, as saying that he's one of the most emo emotionally available people you've ever Yes. Had. Yeah, yeah, that's, it is true. It's true. Actually, I mean, um, I, rem I remember, that's a little funny story. I remember when he called me and and told me that I had the that I had gotten the part. It was, uh, I think, fir the 1st of January. I was still a little hungover from New Year's Eve. And, and... <laughs> And really overwhelmed when he FaceTimed me and then told me I had gotten the part. And I just sort of, I was so stunned that I couldn't really, I couldn't really properly um, react. I, I, and he later on told me that he thought I was emotionally, what's the right word, emotionally uh, restrained. <laughs> because he is so emotional. And I love that about him. Um, there was, for example, there was one scene, I think it's the first time uh, Vanna no, the second time Werner listens to Marie reading, um, uh, well, broadcasting. And we did that, I think, on a Friday, last thing on on set. And then he came to me after that scene and just broke down in tears because he had connected with the character so much and felt so much for him. Um, and that's what I mean by saying, like, he champions you. Um, and that was, that was a really lovely moment. But... So he said you were restrained. So you kind of said, oh, um, yes, thank you very much. I appreciate your hiring me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, 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 I, I did. It was just sort of that moment when you, 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 it's so much, your feelings just don't know where to go, I guess. And I think he, because I think a week before, or no, a few weeks before he had called Aria and she broke down in tears when um, she got the part. So I think he expected something similar from me. Um, yeah, Aria, I think we see her, we see that phone call or that Zoom call yeah, where which she's is breaking still, down online. That's now that's now yeah. kind of kind of a viral element on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> um, in fact, let's let's talk about that experience of working with Aria uh, Mia Roberti, um, who not only had to deal with her 
blindness, but also being on a production set for the first time. And she got to watch you, I guess. It was smart, I think, on, on Sean's part to allow her to have several weeks of kind of adjusting to Budapest and adjusting to the the work on the set and watching you for, I, I guess, what, three weeks, right? Before she started yeah. filming herself. Um, I think, well, the most fascinating for, thing for me was to see how quickly she was able to understand things and how quickly she learned. And she kind of like shadowed Sean and I um, for, for those three weeks. And I, when I, cause I sort of grew up in the industry uh, when, and started acting when I was 11, I was always sort of searching for someone that I could hold on to that was, um, that could guide me through this madness of an industry. Um, and, and I, I just, I just tried to be there for her as much as possible. Um, and, but she was, it, I mean, it was so, like literally so fascinating. She was so eager to learn every single thing um, and then picked it up so quickly. So that was, that was great to, to, to watch her journey of um, becoming a, an actor. Well, she's so incredibly bright, you know, a yeah. Fulbright scholar and, you right. know, uh, summa cum laude and, and Phi Beta Kappa and, you know, and then and going for her doctorate. You know, she's now going to be a doctor and an actor, uh, which is very rare <laughs> to have, yeah. the, have to have the combination. But I know from speaking to Aria that she, you know, it took from her to her mind, she depended on you quite a bit and is hugely appreciative of your generosity of time. Exaggerating. She didn't depend on me that much. I think she um, we have a little dispute. She she just thought that she was able to really lean on you, maybe more emotionally than than physically. But, um, you know, I, I can't even imagine having having very little sight and, and being in that situation. That mm. takes a tremendous courage for one thing. I mean, especially having never been in the in the situation before at all. I mean, she, she'd never auditioned before, which is simply crazy. And then you get this this huge job and all of the all, all of a sudden you've got the, the responsibility of a whole story on your shoulders and she just managed it like it was nothing. I don't think that's ever happened with someone with, with her sight issues, you know, mm. for, a, for a, a project of this scale, um, yeah, being, and I, being, the, being the lead person. Yeah. And I remember her telling me that she uh, really struggled with not having um, a role model, you know, not seeing anyone um, in films or as a public figure that was blind and was an actor or low vision. And, I think that is now really sort of like a a breakthrough of Hollywood, and and I like I I think that it was just the right thing to do um, of Sean and Netflix to you know to try to portray her character as uh, truthfully as possible, um, but also hire a blind actor to to show that this is possible, and now other blind young kids will have a role model um, with Aria, and that's. That really is wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah. How did you, uh, Louis, get on with uh, Hugh Laurie and Lars uh, Eidinger, I believe it's pronounced? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Hugh Laurie is probably probably the kindest person on the planet and the person with the, with the darkest humour. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great combination. Really dark, really dark humour. Um, yeah, so we got along really well um, and... I once, so one thing I said about working with him, and I mean, I still stick to this, is the way he can play with words and his voice was just so fascinating to me to watch. And then I think that is something that I really learned from him, how he, I don't know, like, how do you say that in English? Like, how he, like, hold on, like, he holds on to the words in, like, such a beautiful way. Um, and that was something I was really in awe of uh, working with him. And then Lars, again, very, I mean, the kindest, really so, so kind and so attentive and sincere um, and interested, genuinely interested. And again, very good actor. So, yeah, we had a, we had a good, I mean, we had great fun, to be fair, despite of the, 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 the you know, pretty harrowing topic. Um, we had great fun. That's the thing with a topic that harrowing. Does it 
does it ever get to you as an actor? I mean, I know this is still, you know, memorization of dialogue. Yeah. Yeah, you're not actually going through this, what we're seeing. But but I imagine there have to be moments where where it's get where it gets to you a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And I rem I remember a couple of scenes when Vanna, my character, was talking about the war, and then specifically talking about his experiences in Ukraine. And I remember that the the war in Ukraine, I think, started about two weeks, three weeks before we. Yeah. Um, it coincided pretty close yeah exactly and we were 300 kilometers away from the border and there, so there were a few moments of those when when i was talking about the war in ukraine as my character vana but in reality i was thinking about the images that i recently just saw in the news um so that's you know when when reality and fiction sort of interferes um yeah that was a bit scary I, I remember uh, I went to an event where Sean uh, Levy was talking about this, and I guess there were some people, actual refugees from yeah, the exactly. actually participated as extras in the production, mm. which is which is just unbelievable. Yeah. Um, was it at all intimidating for you, Lewis? I mean, I know you're you're an actor who's got inc a vast uh, amount of experience, despite being. Only in your mid twenties, um, was it at all intimidating being a co-star of such a large production as this, with hundreds of people on? Or are you pretty used to that? Um, I mean, it was. This, I mean, this is my first lead in an American thing, so this is still pretty big for me, and it was pretty big for me. And I was a little intimidated, but everyone was incredibly welcoming. And again, I have to underline that we had such a great time. And I think that is because everyone was so welcoming, so lovely and so eager to make something special. And uh, that just created a, a, like a like a family energy. Yeah. And a pretty decent length uh, production from what I get. Was it 90 days or longer than that? Uh, like I think 86. 30. Yeah, 86. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That, that's 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 a decent amount. What what. Um, message do you hope uh, people take away from from this production uh lewis i mean it's such a you know it's such a uh, emotional topic and um you know we, we've seen so many holocaust themed world war ii themed projects but um but this one's very you know, it seems unusual just in the in the depth of the emotion infused and 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 the length of it you know having having four parts of such length like this and you really become engrossed in it yeah, I think I think the special thing about this is that it really focuses on the hope um, in those dark times, and I think and I hope that 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 is something that people can take away from it um, that there is always hope and that is that is always worth worth it to fight for the, I guess for the good and for the light um, and the you know what what does it say in the book? There's hope in the there's light in the even in the darkest of times. And and that is something very wonderful that I think you can take away from the show. Well, I think that's a, a good theme to end on. Um, all four installments of All the Light We Cannot See are available to stream over Netflix. Lewis Hoffman, best of luck this award season to you. And thanks for joining us today at Gold Derby. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.